Hi, welcome to the Java programming tutorial. Um, what we've been looking at is um, input output, and what we had was froze and null exception. Um, the reason why we had that on it is because you can imagine that you write a program, it opens up a file, maybe in a different network or on the same computer, um, and somebody deletes this file. So your program, the, the code your program is to read this file and it's not there so it's going to produce an error and because the program's produced an error it's going to crash it's going to stop it's something's supposed to happen it's not able to happen and so it tells you it gives you an exception message and stops working you know that's no good for programming you can imagine that you know that a, a, a client's got a program and all of a sudden it stops working well what what you have is like exceptions in Java and object oriented programming where you put code in for an event, an exception that may be thrown and so if you're dealing with input and output or um, buffers or threads and, and different things like that, they can throw exceptions networking etc. So what we do is we try the code and if it works, okay, fine, everything's okay. But if it doesn't work, we stop what we're trying to do and we catch that exception. And within that catch, we can print out the, the reason why there was an exception if we wanted to, or we can write the code. Um, if that doesn't work, do this instead. And so what you can see here that we've created input buffered reader input, new buffered reader, new input stream system and we've covered this in another tutorial and that throws an exception so you need to, you need to, you need to, because it's input output so you need to catch that exception so what you do is you, you try the code that you want to do first and that's a try keyword then you've got braces and inside the braces is a group of code that you want to execute that may throw an exception and so and so this one here like we've got read line um, from input from this here and we're passing it to an integer an int we've covered this in a, further tuto a, a previous tutorial now if that throws an error then we catch it and we just print we do all we're doing is printing out the error here if it, if an error is um, exceptions thrown and so what we do here is is we can do code instead of this we can print out sorry that file has been deleted um, um, cannot read this file and continue with the program doing other stuff and that would be acceptable because or you could you could say the file has been deleted creating a new file so you make the file again to start over again and so on, we're just printing out number. So what we're doing here is we're getting a number from a user and we're just going to print it out. It's not going to um, throw an exception, but it could, and that's why we've got this try and catch. And so if I run a program, um, if I lift this up just a little bit, right, if I type in 44, I don't need to lift it up a little bit more. See if we could just make this bigger. Right, 44, hit enter, and the number is 44, so the program's done what it's supposed to do. And take this down a bit. Yeah. And so that's with the try and catch. So if I take the try and catch away, and you'll see we've got this error mark here saying it's a unhandled exception type in out exception if I run this program it's telling you something to run the program yeah it's telling you it's not going to do it because um, because it's unhandled exception and then it's going to tell you where the exception is in the code and it's here this is going to throw an exception and so that's where we put the this is where we'd put the try, try, and the braces for to group the code that that we want 
um, it's going to throw the exception. And what goes with try is catch. So we do catch and we put a condition in because we're going to pass an exception object and it's IO exception. And then we're going to go E. We can call it what we want. It's just like, it's just like um, declaring a, a variable or an object. And then what we do is two braces because what we're going to put in here is code to be executed if an error is thrown. And this is the same with all try and catch. Um, we do this for like networking out also. And so if, so if I run the code, it will run the default the catch. Um, if I make this bigger, 44, 66, number 66. So that's try and catch. I can, we can take the try and catch away. And there's another way of doing it is, is you, if you go up to the main function, um, you can you, what you can do. Like, I think it's here. I'm not too sure. Pro I O exception. No, it's not that. to that in the next tutorial but that's going to throw an exception so what we do is we try and catch and we're going to go into we'll, what you can do is I'll show you this here this will do it for me we'll do this the add throw declaration this is what I was trying to type in it'll do it for me or you can do the try and catch surround with try and catch that's what we've done with surrounded um, num this We've surrounded this one here with try and catch. So what I'll do is this here. Yeah, it's here. So it throws number format exception and it throws I/O exception. So it's two different exceptions it throws. But instead of a try and catch, you can do throws. Throws because it's more than one. If it was just one, I'll show you this. If it was just one, I hope I'm right here. Then it would be throw. Oh, it's throws. Still throws. Right, it throws in a little exception, but it throws two because of the number format. Um, you can do it that way or the try and catch. That's what I'm showing you. But I'm, I'm giving you try and catch because we're going to move on and we're going to need to use it. So again, thank you for your time.